I tried to beat Super Mario Bros. Wonder without touching a single coin. The rules are simple. I'm gonna be playing through the game and I'm going to avoid all of the coins on the way. You see this coin counter up there? It has to remain at zero. I'm gonna be playing through the entire game, so obviously there might be spoilers. Well, let's just jump into it. I think it's actually the first time a 2D Mario game has a playable intro. And this intro does feature a few coins on the way, but they're quite easy to dodge. Alright, Bowser stole the Wonder Flower and turned himself into a castle, meaning it's now time to play the game for real. The first level, Welcome to the Flower Kingdom, does contain coins, but there's always a way to avoid them all. And I think we should explain a few mechanics of this game while we're here. The game features a bunch of these little flowers and touching them typically spawns coins and purple coins. Sometimes we are required to touch them to proceed in some levels. Anyways, I'll probably try to avoid touching those flowers as much as I can. As for the wonder flowers, those big beautiful ones, well they also create more coins and purple coins as well as purple bits. Those purple bits turn into coins if you collect 10 of them, but once the wonder effect stops, the bits you have collected disappear, so I can touch a few bits, but always less than 10. Alright, I think that covers up pretty much everything that needs to be said. Piranha Plants on Parade is up, and this one was actually not too bad. Sure, you gotta be careful not to bounce on the musical note blocks to avoid the coins up above, but it's all good. After the checkpoint flag, there's gonna be some blocks that actually give out yucky coins when you stand on them. What? Okay, now I'll be paranoid about every single one of these musical blocks. As we cannot jump above the blocks here, I had to do one scary jump under the blocks. But yes, if you run fast enough, it is possible. There's more musical blocks that do contain coins near the end over there, so make a big jump and you'll reach the flagpole. Scram Skedaddlers is next, and to be honest, this one was quite simple. The only difficult part is over here, where you have to chase a skedaddler and he's followed by a trail of coins. You have to jump above the coins and then quickly make your way back to the left, so that he moves a bit to the right and that you don't touch the coins. Anyways, it's a bit tricky, but it is possible. The next stage requires three wonder seeds to unlock, which thankfully we already have. I guess I'll eventually have to get some wonder flowers at some point, and this scares me a lot. Anyways, we now received our first badge, which will probably be quite helpful in this quest, as it allows us to glide slowly and cover more ground in the air. Bull Rush coming through is the next level, and this one is easy as long as you avoid killing those tall enemies, as they do collect coins when they fall down, and that is not cool. We can do a very tight jump in between the enemy and the coins there and reach the flagpole. Here comes the Hoppos, was actually super easy as long as you avoid bouncing on the hippos themselves. Let's do the break time stages now, and Wonder Token Tunes was simple, as long as you avoid the fireworks of coins and wait for them to disappear. But Hurry Hurry was quite the challenge. Typically, this level is actually dumb as you just need to run all the way to the right and grab the seed and that's it. But now, I have to use my hat to land in between two coins multiple times. I mean, look how precise I have to be and I'm in a hurry too because those blocks disappear. Man, I spent way too long on that stage. But yes, it is possible. Here's the thing. I have 7 wonder seeds now, and I need 10 to get through this blockade, and I need to pay 10 purple coins to that guy up there to get some new levels unlocked. Hmm, I'm in a bit of a pickle. I guess it's now time to go back and collect more wonder seeds by touching those wonder flowers. The hippo level was actually quite simple, as all I had to do was to hide from hippos until that big one arrived and then I stole the wonder seed. Nice. The bull rush stage on the other hand required me to learn the pattern to know where the purple bits appear and where the bull rush go. But after a couple of tries, I managed to get the seeds. We now have 10! Let's go! It's time for a wiggler race in the mountains 
and this race was actually quite simple. I did it on my first try. Sure, there's a couple coins to dodge here and there, but they're quite easy to avoid. Next up was the wall climb challenge, and I already knew this one was possible without a coin, cause I actually did it while playing the Best Buy demo before the game came out. Hey, you cannot say I'm not dedicated to my craft. I went to Best Buy to try a coinless challenge. Anyways, Angry Spikes and Sinkin Pipes was actually super simple as there are multiple paths and we can just choose the ones that don't feature coins. Swamp Pipe Crawl features a couple of scary jumps in between coins, but with my trusty wall jump badge, I was all good. With 14 Wonder Seeds in hand, we can now make our way to the first castle level, Pipe Rock Plateau Palace. And this level does feature one very difficult section where you have to jump in between the block and those three coins. You'll absolutely want to be small Mario if you want to fit in there. But once that jump is done, the rest of the stage was actually easy. And the boss doesn't feature a single coin, meaning we beat World 1. Yes! It's time to make our way to the next one, but we have to go through the Petal Isles first. Starting off with the Dolphin Kick Badge Challenge, in which the only coins are the ones swimming away from you during the stage. Hey, the coins are actually getting away from me? <laughs> That's kinda neat. Leaping Smackerel is next, and this underwater stage does contain a bunch of coins, but since we can now swim all around the place, well this one was actually simple. Just make sure you have the Dolphin Kick Badge equipped in order to break those blocks, because I'm sure avoiding all of these coins isn't possible without it. Robert Cove was actually pretty simple, it only featured one section which can be troublesome. You have to swim under those coins, but if you swim too low, you'll just die. Bluebird Roost was a pretty simple vertical level, which does feature a couple coins here and there, but none that cannot be avoided. Alright, with 5 more Wonder Seeds, we can now get to World 2. Out My Way Valley is the first stop, and this level wasn't actually too bad. Most of the coins are inside ice blocks, so as long as you don't melt them, you'll be good. Pokepede Pass features a lot of snow, but to be honest, all of these snow blocks actually make the level easier, as you have more places you can move to. Heck, I even managed to get the Wonder Flowers Wonder Seed, which means I get two seeds in a single level. Now this is epic. Con Darts Away is the next level we'll attempt. And let me tell you that this one is a nightmare. It is inhabited by those enemies, the Con Darts. And these birds will try to destroy you with their beaks. Which is alright, I can deal with that. The thing that isn't alright is the fact that these birds can hit blocks and those blocks can give out yucky coins. Like, I'm given the coins and I didn't even touch them. How is that fair? Anyways, you'll have to make sure the bird attacks blocks that don't contain coins and the only way to know which one do and which one don't is by testing them all. Yeah, it was a pain. And eventually, I reached this part where we need to fall down and look at that. Two con darts hitting two question mark blocks on the left and on the right, giving us a total of four coins. What am I supposed to do? I cannot defeat them both. It's impossible. Well, actually, you can. This block over here gives out a fire flower and there's a Koopa shell right there. Are you starting to figure out what we need to do? Here's a super slow motion view of what needs to be done. We have to fall down, throw the shell to defeat the left bird, and then we move to the right, jump, and burn that bird. Yeah, it seriously took me about an hour to do this part. But yes, I did it. <sighs> that was satisfying. There's a couple more coins to avoid before you grab the flagpole, but after what we've been through, the rest of the level is a total joke. Pole Block Passage starts off with a vertical section where you have to hit blocks to create poles to climb on. Which is all good, but this block there makes evil coins appear on the pole, which isn't really cool. Thankfully, I managed to do some one-sided wall jumps and made my way to the top. The rest of the stage was actually quite simple, but I do admit I haven't hit that many blocks afterwards, just in case more coins appear. Cloud cover features quite a lot of coins, but by climbing in between all of them, well, you can get all 5 tokens and the Wonder Seed. Floating High Jump 1 is a level I want to beat, because the badge it gives you can be super useful. 
and I wasn't really confident in that jump there. But here's the thing, as small Mario, if you jump in just the right way, you can land over there and then make your way up to the next pipe. After that, you slide and jump under these coins. And there you go, the hardest part is done. Man, I cannot believe this level was actually possible. It almost feels like someone at Nintendo watches these challenge videos and wants me to succeed. And whoever you are, thank you. Flufffuff Kerfuff is next. And this level was actually quite simple. Although you'll want to wait for a while before getting into the end pipe, just to avoid getting awarded some yucky purple coins. This is a bit of a dumb strategy, but it works. Up and down with puffy lifts feature a couple coins, but they're super easy to avoid. The Fluff Puff Peaks Flying Battleship is our next stop, and this one was not very difficult, but since it's an auto scroller, it kinda took a while to clear, but yeah, it's okay. Countdown to Drop Down was actually not too difficult, as most of the coins can be avoided by using the Lakitu Cloud or just moving away. Heck, I even got the Wonder Flower and managed to avoid all of the coins while I was falling down from the sky. That's two more Wonder Seeds for me. Cruising with Linking Lifts normally wants you to ride this platform and add more lifts to it, but I soon noticed that hitting some of these blocks often lead to coins falling from the sky. So you know what? I decided to avoid riding the lift altogether. I just made my way from one block to the next until the end. It sounds a bit complicated, but truly, it really wasn't. Time for the castle. And this one started off pretty easy, with a lot of piranha plants, but not that many coins. The thing is, I eventually reached this part with those three pipes standing in your way. You're meant to get to the top one and let it drop to open up the path. But as you can see, it's full of yucky coins. Oh. Oh, I did try to grab the Wonder Flower to see if the path would open up in other ways, but alas, I think we'll be forced to touch a Yucky Coin in this stage. Here's the thing though, if we connect to the internet, we might be able to get someone to place a standy on the other side of the pipe and we can probably try to reach it as a ghost. All right. Let's wait over there and wait for someone to revive me on the other side and... There's one! Wait, wait, where are you going? Wait for me! Come back! Ugh, seriously? This dude was a meanie! But eventually, he decided to wait for me and he helped me out. Thank you so much, Castle Herd! Thanks to you, I made my way to the other side. After that, everything is okay and can be done without a coin. Yes, the quest is still alive! Time to get back to the Petal Isles and do a couple more levels, starting off with the second Dolphin Kick Challenge, which contains a few coins near the start, but after that, it's all good. Hey, would you look at that? It's our buddy Wiggler, and he wants a rematch! And this time, there's a couple coins underwater, but as long as you use your Dolphin Kick to avoid them, it's gonna be alright. Downpour Uproar is next, and this one was actually very easy to beat, as there's more than enough room to dodge all of the pesky coins. Alright, we now have enough Wonder Seeds to get to World 3. Hop Hop and Away features a bunch of enemies, but very few coins, meaning it was actually simple to beat. Unreachable Treasure was such a dumb stage, as they normally want you to hit some invisible blocks to make your way up there, but we can just do one-sided wall jumps and reach it. <laughs> Ready, Aim, Fly features a bunch of coins on the way, but since there's water underneath us most of the time, we can just swim in it when we need to, making this one quite simple. Getting the 5 tokens in Watery Wonder was also very easy, allowing us to quickly get to Crouching High Jump 1, a badge challenge level where we need to avoid bouncing on any enemies, cause their death animation could potentially grab some coins. Thankfully, I managed to let them all live and I made my way to the flagpole. And I'm pretty sure this badge will be quite helpful, so I'm glad I have it with me. Hop to it is a very problematic level. Getting up isn't too bad if you're being careful, but as soon as you leave that pipe, you'll see that there are some happy cats down there standing under brick blocks that contain yucky coins. And as soon as you jump, they will do the same and break the blocks and collect the coins for you. Uh-oh, we're in big trouble now. As you can see, there seems to be a yellow pipe up there, which probably is the pipe you come out of when you do the Wonder Flower challenge. So I wondered, what if we came out of that pipe and used our big hat to glide to the other side of these coins? 
Would it be possible? Well, maybe, but then I also need to kill those enemies. So let's make sure I have a fire flower too, which I can get from earlier levels. So I did try this strategy and it doesn't work because I always land on at least two coins. Ugh. And even if I wanted to get some help from people online with standees that could revive me with the ghost strat, well, there's just no way for me to die here. But then I had another idea. What if I was Yoshi? Like, what if I managed to flutter jump and jump in that pit? I might be able to do it. So let's try again. And oh my goodness, it worked. And this dude, Justin, he revived me. Oh, thank you so much, Justin. You're the freaking best. With this level out of the way, we can try Lounge to Victory, a level featuring more happy cats. But this time we have to avoid jumping so that they don't break blocks containing coins. Man, you know what? These Huppy Cats dudes are getting on my nerves. Thankfully, this level was way easier and I beat it quite fast. Zip Track Dash is the final trial for this world and you absolutely have to get the Wonder Seed to beat this one, which scared me a little because when you're holding onto rails, if there's coins, you're kind of forced to collect them. Thankfully, uh, it wasn't too bad. You can just ride on top of rails and if you're being careful, you'll get to the end, grab the Wonder Seeds and that's it. There's no boss fight in this one, so the world is over. We're back on Petal Isles for now, and the Jewel Block Cave is actually a pretty simple stage, especially once you get the new drill power up, as you can hide from the coins by going underground. So yeah, easy peasy. Time to destroy this plant and move on to World 4, the Sun Baked Desert. Our Maids on the Roll is our first stop, and everything was good up until this part with this circle of coins. They're spinning too fast, and they're spinning even faster under the Wonder Flower effect, meaning I'm gonna have to need help from someone online. And that's where my man Gianni comes into play by trying to save me desperately. But I wanna be on the other side of these coins, my dude! Oh, here you go. Thank you. The rest of the level went very well, and everything was good. The desert mystery is up, and there wasn't anything mysterious about this stage at all, which I cleared quite fast. Rolling Ball Hall was actually filled with some rolling balls, but thankfully they don't collect the coins for you, so the level in itself was simple. Blooms of the Desert Skies was kind of difficult, with all of these Blooms enemies bouncing you all over the place and onto upcoming coins. The Wonder section was truly scary, as I had to float on the left side to avoid collecting anything really. If you end up touching a star, it will act as a magnet and will collect the coins for you, which is a no-no, but thankfully you can avoid everything and this level is possible. The floating Wonder Tokens mini stage was a bit tricky, but I managed to collect all of the tokens without touching a single coin, which is good. Valley Full of Snuddles was actually super simple to clear and the Sun Baked Skirmish was easy too. Color Switch Dungeon was actually pretty tricky, especially when doing the Wonder Seed part. You cannot see anything in the dark, so you definitely want to grab it using the Crouching High Jump badge. Take a look at all those crazy precise jumps I have to make in between all of the coins. Truly scary, but yes, it is possible to do it. I needed Yoshi's flutter jump in order to reach the Wonder Seed up there in the Lights Out stage, and I also needed Yoshi to eat some of these plants in that Parachute Hat challenge. I then needed two more Wonder Seeds to get to the castle, so you know what? I went back to previous levels and got some Wonder Flowers to get them, which wasn't actually that tricky. This first Wonder Flower just made everything in slow motion, and the second one created a big pyramid that I had to get in to get my Wonder Seed. I had to do some one-sided wall jumps, but with my parachute cap, it was quite simple. The sun-baked desert palace was actually a bit tricky, as it contains a whole lot of coins. I had to use my parachute cap quite a lot, and even had to damage boost one of the jumps by touching some fire bars. But yes, I made it to Junior and kicked his little butt. Another world is cleared! And you know what that means, we're going back to the Petal Isles to gather more seeds in order to enter the final two worlds. The flying battleship needs to be downed first, and this level is very long, as it's an auto-scroller. But as long as you avoid touching the flowers that create circles of coins in front of you, you'll be all good. 
Gnosh Lair is a level featuring those lovely enemies here that actually eat coins. Yeah, they help me out by removing the coins in front of me. <laughs> what a bunch of cool creatures. Can, can we have one at home, please? Mama Mouthful was super simple to clear, and so was the Boosting Spin Jump Challenge. As for Muncher Fields, it did feature a couple scary jumps here and there, but it wasn't too bad. And with all of these Wonder Seeds, we can now visit another world, Deep Magma Bog. Where the Roombas rule is easy, as long as you avoid turning into a Roomba yourself, because avoiding all of the coins in that form is actually impossible. Remain Mario and drill through floors and ceilings and this level will be cleared. Rog in the runes is a pretty fun level, but you'll want a drill hat in order to avoid some of the coins. I also managed to get the Wonder Flower, so that's a bonus seed for us, which is always welcome. Pull Turn Burn is a level full of lava and fire hazards, and trust me, you'll have to be extra careful as there's a bunch of coins in this one. The thing is, it wasn't too bad because I managed to get both Wonder Seeds, so that's cool. Sadly, not all things are bright for us. You see, in order to reach more levels to gather more seeds, we have to move to the left side of the map, which is actually locked by many obstacles depending on the level you're on. You'll either see a rock that we need to break or a broken bridge that needs to be repaired. And to do that, you have to spend some purple coins. Which leads me to this new question. Does it go against the rules of the challenge to gather coins that are only meant to be used on the world map? I think it might do, but then again, world map events are typically in their own category. Should we call the coins we need to get meta purple coins? Especially considering we can even get them from the world map by visiting our boy Captain Toad? Uh, you let me know. But anyways, we'll need a bunch to open up the paths. But thankfully, after spending all of those purple coins, well, both of my coin counters up there are still showing up as zeros. So I guess the quest can continue. It's time to get inside another flying battleship. And this time, this one's very difficult. I absolutely needed the spin jump badge in order to make that scary jump in between these coins and the flying airship. It took me a while to do it, but yes, it is possible. Thankfully, the rest of the level was actually simple. Hot 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 was a very simple stage, and so was Magma Flare Up, which doesn't feature a single dangerous coin. Wavy Ride through the Magma Tube was a bit difficult, but with the drill power up, it makes everything easier. Dragon Boneyard featured a couple stressful parts, but it wasn't too bad. Watch out for that annoying dragon, because he might spit coins in your face, and that's kind of gross. The Deep Magma Bug Palace is up, and this stage was actually super simple, meaning we can easily defeat Junior and get another Royal Seed. Alright, we have one more world to visit, Fungi Mines. And this one starts off with this dude here that requires 10 purple coins to build the bridge back. Ugh, more meta coins for us. You know what, whatever. It's only for the world map, so I can live with that. There you go, buddy. Taylor's Toxic Pond is up, and this one was simple. I even got the Quiz Wonder Seed, and let me tell you that this quiz is pretty easy. Trudian Piranha Plants was also simple, as long as you remember the fireworks appearance order. Up Shroom, Down Shroom was also kind of easy and allowed me to get even more Wonder Seeds. Wubber Runes started off quite simple. You know, a couple coins here and there, but they were pretty easy to avoid. That was until I met this dude, Konk. This block dude likes to hit stuff by smashing his body on them. The thing is, this part here contains some brick blocks and inside the brick blocks are, you guessed it, evil coins. And as we can see, even though I didn't touch anything, well, Kunk touched the coins and I have been awarded three coins. This is a bit annoying. And there's like no way to kill this dude. What am I supposed to do? Well, you know what? I ended up running as fast as I can. And eventually, I was probably way too far ahead that even though he hit the blocks, everything despawned. So I wasn't awarded any. That means I can make my way to the end of the stage Grab the flagpole and course clear question mark? What does that even mean? Well, 
Here's the explanation. You need to finish this course with the Wonder Flower effect. Okay, you're gonna say, hey, it's not too bad. Well, do you want me to tell you where the Wonder Flower is located? It's in this single block, right there, next to all of those break blocks full of coins that Kunk touches. Ah, uh, what am I supposed to do? <sighs> you know, Kunk is always trying to crush people close to him. So my idea here was that if I ran super fast to the right and then spawn a second player, Yoshi in that case, well, I could just place Yoshi over there and Kunk would always attack him forever, which would leave me plenty of time to do a crouching high jump and hit the Wonder Flower block. Let's try this strategy. <laughs> it worked! Nice! Now that I am transformed, I can make my way to the Wonder Seed and finish the stage. I just cannot believe that strategy worked. Kinda sucks I had to make poor Yoshi suffer, but you know what? It is what it is. Swaying runes was easy as long as you grab the Wonder Flower, because if you don't, the course won't actually be cleared. Yep, it's another one of these. Anyways, the next level was the KO Arena, so you know what that means? Beating up enemies and very few coins to dodge. Nice. With all of the Wonder Seeds in hand, we can try the next and final level, Poison Runes. And let me tell you that this one was also pretty difficult. The thing is, you have to avoid a bunch of coins as a Woba, and this is harder than it looks. Those jumps are really nerve-wracking, but they're all thankfully possible. Time for the final level, Operation Poplin Rescue. And this one is definitely gonna be easy, right? So you start off by grabbing the Wonder Seed, because if you don't, the screen just won't scroll. And... Wow. Are you serious? Coins? Up there? And there's literally nowhere to go? You cannot save yourself with the online ghost this time around, because there's just no way to lose a life. Well, I guess this is it, gamers. We are going to be forced to collect 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 coins. Uh, that sucks so hard. Uh, I'm so bummed. I'm so sad. This is the level that kills the run. But you know what? I guess we're still going to try to finish the game at this rate, because I want to know if we have to collect more. Hopefully not. Anyways, let's go to the final Bowser world. And starting off the world is the Missile Meg Mayhem, which actually wasn't too bad, as it doesn't feature that many coins. High Voltage Gauntlet contains a few coins hidden in the dark, so be extra careful while you're moving and you'll be good. Evade the Seeker Bullet Bills was stressful at times, but it wasn't that bad either, because most of these brick blocks they don't contain coins, so the bullet bills can break through them without any issues whatsoever. Bowser's blazing beats was a pain in the butt. The first part of the level was actually simple, but as soon as you reach the next one with the Wonder Seed, get ready to experience pain. There is a bunch of coins that keep appearing on the beat of the music at various random spots. So you just kind of have to play it a bunch of times and memorize the coin's location. But eventually, you'll be able to dodge them all. But man, oh man, was that difficult. Alright, with that done, it's time to get to Bowser and finish the fight. The stage was actually pretty difficult at first. You typically have to avoid this one-hit kill spiky ball by hiding in that pit. But with all of the coins there, we definitely don't want to do that. The thing is, we can avoid the spiky balls by jumping above it, but afterwards it turns into this big fossil thingy and there's just no way to get inside of it on time, so I would always get pushed to the left and would die. This is a bit of a bummer. Does that mean we need to collect more coins? Well, not if we switch to the high crouching jump badge and we use Yoshi. Because with those two elements combined, we can jump super high and flutter jump even higher. And if done correctly, we can enter the fossil and clear this part. After that, there's a few more coins remaining, but they can all be dodged. The fight against Bowser will be a bit annoying, because if you hit his hands, you'll be rewarded with three purple bits. So that means we don't want to defeat any of these hands. But they're pretty dumb and eventually slap the floor and they die when they do so. <laughs> idiots. 
Keeping that in mind, we just have to hit Bowser a few times on the chin and then jump on top of the head and voila, he's done for. We did it! We cleared Super Mario Bros. Wonder! We saved the Flower Kingdom! The thing is, no, it is not possible to beat Super Mario Wonder without touching a single coin. And it's only because of that one dumb stage in World 5. Like, of all the challenges we had, all of the crazy moves we had to pull off, the part that kills the run is this dumb, easy level that looks like it was made in Mario Maker in 2 seconds! It is frustrating, I'm not gonna lie, I am mad right now. But still, this challenge was amazing, it was super fun, and like, I'm glad I have attempted it. Anyways, please give me a big like, and please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as for me, I'll see you in the next video. Bye!